All right, God bless you guys for joining me here. I'm actually morning prayer here at HNLC Studios. For most of you who are going to be joining us and want to get into the prayer this morning, I left a link on several nice different networks. Uh, mainly, uh, if you go to my actually uh, Facebook network or my Instagram, um, my Twitter, you'll see that link. And it's actually uh, give me a link that you can tap to get into the uh, service this morning for those who uh, you know want to be a part of the prayer. It's one of the things we do every morning here at HNLC Studios, not only with you guys, you know, on actually radio broadcasters, but, you know, with me and my wife, we rise early in the morning, and we thank God, you know, for another opportunity to life. That's one of the biggest things we do at 5 a.m. in the morning is, you know, pray our Father's one in heaven, how that be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We ask God to continue to show us and bless us and guide us as we continue to head off this powerful ministry in the eyes of the kingdom of God. Not in the eyes of others, but in the eyes of the kingdom of God. And if we ask him, he continues to guide us through the promises that he declared over our lives. And we thank God for this opportunity this morning to be with you in prayer. And we're going to hear what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us concerning this word. That's always coming from the kingdom of God. And we thank God for each and every one of you joining us this morning. Let's go ahead and get us a scripture. And let's hear what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us concerning this word that comes out of the book of Psalms 51. David comes with a powerful uh, repentance prayer, and it's one of my favorites in the Bible, not the favorite, because it opens himself up to just being some person that God really needs to transgress and makes um, to the point of uh, acceptability to him. You know, the Word of God talks about in uh, Romans chapter 12, holy and acceptable. That's the things we got to understand and realize in our life. One of the biggest things in the kingdom of God, if we want to be knowledgeable with God, if we want to forgive us for our, transgress, our transgressions, we have to first, you know, come to with a humble spirit. And we really have to examine ourselves, whether we're looking at other people, what they have done, or what the circumstances may be, right in the midst of what's going on, God planned for your life is yet still there. He still got the power to move. And he won't go back on his ver- on his extra word, as he declares in the kingdom of God, that he will not in the uh, we want to get ourselves in position here. You know, we don't want to hear what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us concerning this particular word here at HNLC Studios. It's said once again, it's a pleasure for you guys to be with me. If you turn your Bibles over to the book of Psalms 51, we're going to go ahead and get moving. Uh, give you guys a few minutes. I see quite a few people, my actually uh, partners of the Four West and the Far East, they're coming in. You know, and we thank God for them being a part of our services here this morning. We thank God for the uh, diligence over the years and their support, their prayers. And it's just a blessing, you know, uh, to have them continue to just stay with us and hear what the Holy Spirit is doing to these ministers. Uh, me and my wife here at HNLC Studios. The Word of God decrees and it declares as we pull out music heck here. I want to make sure we're going to hear this clearly. The Word of God says, Lord, have mercy upon me according to thy Loving kindness. It says, according to the multitude of our tender mercy. I want you to really understand this. I want you to read through it because I need to understand the increments of this. He said, blot out my transgressions. David is admitting that we should all admit. When we wake up early in the morning with tomorrow, pray our Father who are in heaven, how there be thy name. And he kind of quotes, and he doesn't kind of quote, he quotes the word of God in Psalms 1 here and um in Psalm 51, in verse 2, say, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities. When you understand that particular area right there, God is really declaring, David is really declaring the decree that, you know, even as I look at the Word of God in Psalms 1, I want to be that blessed man you always desired me to be, but I want to make sure I'm going to clear myself with you of any sins or wrongdoings. So he said, Wash me thoroughly in my iniquities. He's admitting that he's wrong. This is what we're supposed to do every morning because a new day is dawning. And cleanse me from my sins. He declares and decrees. He acknowledge my transgressions. And my sins are ever before me. Every morning we wake up. The enemy has got a plot and a plan. To try to stop us from doing. Or going where God has us to go. And this is what we really got to understand. In the process of doing the word of God. Or understanding the word of God. That he's always there. Helping us. Anytime we're going to slip or fall. And he declares and he talks about himself. He said, against thee only have I sinned. And when we sin, we were shaped in iniquity. We were born into sin. But the opportunity of Christ done at the cross and what God has done with his son through Jesus Christ, he gave us the opportunity to come to him and be able to talk to him 
Yeah, we talk about in Romans chapter 5, justified by faith, we got access to Christ. So that access is freely given to me and you every morning we wake up to make sure when we start our day we're covered, which is the model prayer, our Father who art in heaven, that when the enemy tries to come against us like the flood with no declare and decree, we may slip. But the power of God's prayer that was over our life when we woke up in the morning gave us the opportunity to have that mercy. He said, against thee only have I sinned. And done this evil in thy sight. Now we understand the process with Bathsheba. We understand all these things were going with Absalom. All these things were going with Uriah. We understand Nathan the prophet came in and put that word on David in the process of knowing that he knew his judgments and his sins was ever before him, and he was going to let him know that. But David was a man after God's own heart. So when you look at the fourth verse, he said, "Against thee only have I sinned." And this is what we got to understand as men and women of God. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. As long as we're truthful with ourselves about what we're doing, and we're not walking according to the word of God and understand the purpose of John 13, 34, and 35, we're lost. He said, in this type, and only have I sinned, and then this evil in thy sight, that thou mayest be justified when I speak it, and be clear when I judge it. Your heart has to be clear. When you're coming to the presence of God, you got to understand when the word of God decrees according to Matthew chapter 6. Go into your secret place. Close the door. And when you begin to speak to your father in secret, the first thing you need to do and we need to do is tell God about our own sins rather than somebody else's. Because the word of God decrees, he knows the plan, he knows the thought he has for me and you. And it's a good plan. It's not of evil. But it's expectancy. As long as we understand and realize that we're wrong, we have to ask God to help us. And forgive us for the things we have done that we become ignorant of in our understanding. He admits that he was shaped in iniquity in the fifth verse. He said, when I was born out of my mother's womb, she conceived me. I knew I had the ability to mess up because I was born in the flesh. And David is really pouring his heart out here because he's making this word manifest so strong that it's all about what he had done. And how God can help him back to the position he need to be. And once he pronounced him to be, according to the word of God, we look over in the area of what happened with uh, Saul. Um, we talk about the process, what happened with uh, David dealing with uh, this situation with uh, Uriah. And all of these events that were taking place during the course of time when David was in his position of being what God wanted him to be. And then he fell from grace based on some of the lustful things that he'd done in his flesh. And all of us had the opportunity to fall. The word of God speaks it very clearly in Romans chapter 3 and 28. For all has fallen short. Not just David, but every one of the apostles. As long as you're here on earth, you got the ability to fall short. Don't ever feel like you're incapable of falling. Because this is why Jesus died on the cross that you even have the grace and the mercy to know that when you do fall, you are to admit behind closed doors or whatever it may have been. Because God already knows the plan. He already knows the things of your shortcomings based on the word of God in Ephesians chapter 2. He makes it clear that we walk those courses. We've done those things. It was not appealing to Christ. And it's only through him that we ask for forgiveness. And the word of God decrees, behold, that desire the truth in the inward part, in the hidden part, that shall make me to know wisdom. I need understanding and guidance. Ha. Huh? Lord, help me. Because some of the things we deal with in life, we don't know where we're getting ready to go into. But we know through the power of God's word. The Bible says we're guided by the Holy Spirit each and every day. When we lend ourselves uh, each and every day, let them have uh, uh, direction in us to give us what we need. The word of God declares, according to Romans uh, 10, 17, we got to have that hearing expectation. We got to understand how the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, not coming from someone else, but within you. So many people are running behind fables and things because they don't have a true relationship with Christ in terms of where they should purge themselves, as he says in verse 7, with the hapis, meaning it was a branch that they used when the actual priest anointed the man and woman of God. And I should be clean, wash me, and I should be whiter than snow. These things, as Christ is telling you, that we need to work with the inward of us. We need to look on our inside of our own selves. If we want to walk with Christ, we say we love the Lord, then we got to check our own selves. According to the word of God in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight. First, let a man examine himself. He said, make me to hear gladness that thy bones was I have crushed or have broken are rejoicing. This word is very powerful in the midst of sin. David said, even in the midst of my uncomfortability and my repentance as being a sinner, I really want you to hold me and help me. 
I want you to strengthen me in my understanding of that soul that in that cares of my mourning won't consume me. Some people worry and just worry and worry, worry and worry and takes them out because they don't put their trust in God. They don't turn it over to Jesus in order he'll work it out. The word of God decrees according to verse 9. He said, hide my face for my sins. They're always before me and blot out all of my iniquities, evil thoughts, evil thinking. Renew my mind as it declares according to Romans chapter 12. I beseech you that for brother, by the mercies of God, present your body, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, that of a reasonable source. Understand that you got the ability to sin like everybody else. The word of David said, created me a clean heart. This word goes back to the word of God who talks about the process of the law of the kingdom. In Galatians chapter 5, in that 14th verse, the all the law of the kingdom is all love. Goes back to the new commandment. In the word of God, John 13, 34, and 35, you want to be a clean representation of the kingdom of God and what he's doing for your life. The word of God said, if I'm not there in the 10th verse, he said, I want you to create in me a clean heart. Oh God, renew a right spirit within me. Sometimes I don't know how to act and carry myself. Sometimes I find myself having defensive things to say about people I don't even know. And I call myself being a man of God. I call myself being a person who walks according to the kingdom. You really believe in the declaring the decree that in my life is righteous. God said, no. The word of God said, cast me not away. David speaks about it. Cast me not away of thy presence and take that now Holy Spirit from me. This is amazing when he talks about this. All the things you see him talk about himself from one down to ten. David comes back and says, all the things I may have done, I want you to understand something. I don't want you to take your Holy. I can care less about myself. But I don't want you to take the Holy Spirit from me. That's the only thing I need to restore me into the position where I need to be. This is what he speaks in verse 12. Restore in me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with a free spirit. Lord, I want to know who you are. I want to know who you are in my life. I want you to show me and direct me and, and, and guide me what seems to be these shadows and the valleys that I'm dealing with in my life. He declares in the 14th verse, deliver me from the blood guiltness. Oh God, ha, huh, in the name of Jesus. God of my salvation. He acknowledged that he's a God of his salvation. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall sing or shall show forth the praises. Because I know, Father God, is only you who can bring me out of the conditions that I'm in. For thy desire it not to sacrifice or else I would have gave it. The word of God is saying here, it's not about sacrificing. You read the word of God over in the book of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15. When Samuel gave uh, Saul uh, the mission to go and kill off those who attacked the ending of their group coming up out of Egypt. And he was given the command to slaughter everything that was over there. And he felt like he can save sacrifice with God. Christ, I don't need your sacrifices. I need you to be obedient because obedience is better than sacrifice. You want to be a sacrificial offering Christ. Listen to what David is speaking here. David said he wanted to delight it not by burnt offerings. He declares in that 16 verse, Thou desire it not sacrifice, else I have gave it. Thou, de look at, thou delight it not in burnt offerings. He declares the word in 17, The sacrifices of God are broken spirit. I got to be broken. Most people don't want to be broken. They're walking with too much pride. And I say it all the time. We've got so much stage performance going on in these places. They're bamboozling people and tearing people's family apart. Leading them to believe things that God never said. Getting fed loads of Captain Quint cereal. Pulling their roots and they running the places. Running out the just shadows. Rabbit trails. And don't understand wherever they are, God can bless them right there. The Bible said to him to believe all things are possible. The word of God comes once again in that 16th verse. Thy desire not sacrifices, or else I would have gave it. Thy, de look at, thy delight is not in burnt off. It ain't about the physical thing. It's about me. The sacrifices of God, are, I need to be broken. I need to admit that what's wrong with me, what's going on within myself. If I'm going to be a representative of the kingdom of God, then I need to break down. And ask God to help me because I am the one. I'm the vessel. 
I'm the one that you gave the spirit to according to Jeremiah 29, 11, with the direction based on Jeremiah 1 and 5. I'm the one that needs the help. The Lord God declares and decrees, he says in this particular 18 verse, when you think about the 18 verse, he, when he begins to break himself with the sacrificial things, he comes back and say, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. I want you to understand that. Look at the God who's the author and the finisher of your faith. A broken and contrite heart. I want to make sure everything I may have done, I got it all out about me and nobody else. Not what they done to me, not what they said to me. Anymore. I want to check myself. Oh God, that will not despise. Do good. And thy good pleasures. Unto Zion. Build thy the wall of Jerusalem. I want the holy place in me. Then I shall be pleased with that sacrifice of righteousness with burnt offering. The only reason I'm going to understand I'm going to receive a burnt offering, but I got to check myself first. I can't run over the top of my sins. I must confess my sins. If I'm going to get a blessing from the Lord, then I need to know within myself that I have been pulled away. I've been bamboozled by something or somebody because the Holy Spirit is everywhere. The Bible declares and decrees, if you love me, then now one of your prayers will ever touch the ground. I don't care where you are. I'm a God to make a way in the middle of a desert. You running off the things. Trying to prove yourself to be something. God's got a prophet or a man that got right in your face. showing you direct, But you refuse. God said you are paid with your disobedience. The Bible says I shall be pleased with that sacrifice in the 19th verse of righteousness. With burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings, that show that offer bullock upon your offer. Only then, as long as I'm right, I can't come to you toe up from the floor up and need a check up from the neck up. I got to examine myself. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. Even as we pray, Father God, we know the heavenly cloud of the Holy Ghost is all around us. And in the midst of this heavenly realm, Father God, we ask you for forgiveness and everything we have done, may have said, everything we may have created to cause havoc in anyone's life or on our own life, family life, whatever it may be. Father God, we ask you to block those things out because, Lord, we desire to have the offerings and be able to present ourselves as being a living sacrifice to you, that you use us. In this time and season that we're in, that we know and understand, by this, Father God, you will protect our family, protect our sisters, protect our brothers, protect our friends, protect all those who have a heart to come to you and all those who don't have a heart to come to you, that you'll transform and change them to the point of understanding that who you are in Christ. The only way we're going to make it is we've got to seek you first, the kingdom and all of your righteousness. Father God, I'm asking you to go into the households of every individual, whatever there's an illness, whatever there's a sickness, whatever there's a problem, whatever there's a stagnant of the leasing of the Holy Ghost, Father God, we ask you to break it down. Knock the door down, Father God, and go in and begin to corrupt and shut down everything in those households and in those individuals that's not like God. That they be your disciples as they go out and you declare the word throughout all the world, not being anything of themselves, but understanding they are workmen for the kingdom of God. Father God, I thank you for every opportunity that the woman of God has placed in my life has been an obedient man of God. Mary Earl Ellis showed us the way, the direction, that in our families that we no conquering of the enemy that come against us. We showed how we are to go and come. There's no outside force that can come and pull us out of the way because we've been shown the way, how we can go to God for ourselves. And even as I show my children the very same thing, Father God, let it get a hold of them. Don't let nobody pull them away and lead them down the wrong road to be something that you never have said. That according to the kingdom of God, you will show them and direct them according to the prayers that have been promised and prayed over this generation. If I got to look at all our young people, touch them, all the mayors, all the lawyers, all the legislators, all those are part of whatever program that governs those cities. Father God, help them to come under conviction of the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. That we may clearly know that we can be free, Father God, who the Son set free as free indeed. I thank you for my household as you begin to move in every area, in every corner, as you continue to bless my daughters, bless my sons. Bless them, Father God, through the presence and the power of your Holy Spirit. Take their minds and shape them to understand, Father God, they can't do nothing without you. 
Because you are God and beside you there is no other. Father God, we thank you this morning. We give you homage. We give you praises. We give you shabakam. Because we know you're God. And beside you there is no other. Father God, through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, I seal this prayer this morning in the third heaven. This word has already gone forth and it will and shall not go back void. But it has already accomplished all that in therein. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. This time, this moment. In Jesus' name, we pray, Lord. Amen.